Hey everybody, welcome back to Music Com Academy. I used to write um, sort of articles for an online uh, music publication. Uh, it's called FYI Music. And I'm going to link this article that I wrote, I don't know, two, three years ago. I'm going to put a link below that if you want to read the article. Um, it goes into more depth and more data and stuff than what I'm about to tell you here. And this is sort of a lesson of sorts, but it's more like a random thought, kind of like what I was doing with the immigrant. I did the immigrant video that you would have seen. Um, and, and I think there's a place for these kind of videos because you know, they're not an actual lesson of how to program programming, but I think they're information that you should know that I've sort of picked up along the way or have crossed my mind that I think e either helped me then when I was programming or if I was programming now, I would definitely use this information. So I'm just passing it on to you. Do with it what you will. I'm going to tell you about a city. It, it is in Florida. The city is a city of about 200,000 people. And music is a big part of this city. Okay? It's huge. We're in the downtown core of this city. Um, and they actually have different sections. Every single night, they have live music. I mean, other than COVID, obviously. But even now, actually, they're still, they're still out there kind of doing it, just not as many people. But, you know, they, they literally have like stands, grandstands that go up and a band is out there, a live band. This is not a DJ or anything. It's a live band. And there will either be classic rock or it'll be top 40 hits. You know, and it'll be very current top 40 hits. And the bands are really, really good. And the people will be out there and dancing and the women will be dancing and the guys will be dancing along with them. And when you look around, which is what I first noticed, I was kind of standing there like, wow, this is pretty cool. You don't see this everywhere. And I was looking around and I'm watching the people and all of the women, all of the women are mouthing the lyrics to all of the songs. You know, sometimes you'll go over and somebody's kind of singing along with the song, you know, and, and you know they know the words. And you're looking like the guys are kind of sort of doing it to maybe like a third of the guys, okay? So what kind of city do you think that is? And what do you think the audience is? Live top 40 bands, live classic rock bands. Well, the city is a retirement community and pretty much the average age there is about 75. So when I'm describing these you know, women and guys dancing in the square, you're looking at 70 year olds, 75 year olds, 80 year olds, 90 year olds, somebody sitting in a wheelchair, somebody else has got a walker, and they're totally into classic rock, but mostly uh, pop music, top 40, is what the bands play, okay? And everybody knows the words, so that makes you start thinking, well, this is not what I expected at all. You'd expect that once you get over the age of 60, 65, that's the normal thinking that you know, over the age of 65, well, you, you better play something different than today's top 40 hits. And yet they know them all and they all clearly like them and immediately get up you know, off those stands and go dancing when something comes on. So to me, there's like an answer there. And it's like, well, if they like the music clearly, and they're 75 years old, how can that be? Well, if you're 75, that means you probably were a teenager in the 60s. That's where top 40 music sort of kicked in, okay? And the choices back then, 60s and 70s, you know, when AM was king was pretty much top 40. So their ear has grown up with top 40. Top 40 has been their entire life. You know, they top 40 in the beginning, but they probably kept going top 40 up until they're, I don't know, I guess, I'm guessing here 38, 40 years old. And then they just simply moved into a slightly softer version, which would have been AC or hot AC and just kept going. But clearly now they're listening to top 40. Otherwise, how would they know the songs? I doubt that they're watching MTV, like unlikely. So it's got to be the radio. So these people love top 40 music and they're older, older adults. Let's just drop that down now to like 50 year olds. I would think if you're running a top 40 radio station right now and you're programming it, you probably sort of mentally think like, well, 50, 55 year olds, 49 year olds, 48, 47, I'm sort of pushing the top end that I can ever get. There's no possible way I'm getting that. Okay. I'm not picking those people up. But after seeing this and I've given what I'm telling you, the question then a big one becomes why? Why can't you? Clearly, the music isn't driving them away. 
you know, unless you had, unless you were really super wading into hip hop or heavy rap or some other stuff like that. But if you're doing a mainstream CHR, the music isn't what's pushing them away. It's got to be something else that your station is doing while you can't get them. Because otherwise, they'd be there. Would it be the jingles? No. Would it be the production? No. Would it be the promos? No. Would it be your advertising? No. What you do on the net? No. Is it the music? We just went through that. No. Well, what else is left? I would say that it's your jocks. And what the jocks, not that the jocks are bad or anything, but just what are they talking about? What do they dwell on? You know, is what they are saying, maybe it tags a 20-year-old, maybe, but it's total white noise to somebody that's 45, 48 years old. Perhaps your jocks are doing something, you know, that would be the printed version on Twitter of white noise. You know, it's, oh, here's what I did. Here's what I ate. Here's what my friends were, you know, had said. Where an average person, an older person is going to go, I don't really care about that. You're not telling me anything. Versus maybe talking about Justin Bieber doing the song Lonely, you know, his version when he did it on whatever award show that was. Or some other thing, or talking about stuff that's on Netflix, you know, that both sides would have interest in. I know that's just what I'm getting at. S move the talking and jokes and things that what you're, what you're dealing with, something that both sides, both audiences would like. Don't just lean toward this one 100%. And I would say, do not really very much, if, not, if at all, go toward this one. Because that would sound weird for the radio station to have a younger person who, you know, obviously is the target. He had a 25-year-old go, why are you talking about, you know, 401k plans, you know, or something like that? You know, so you wouldn't go with that one. But all I'm saying is think about what's going on on your radio station and try to do stuff that where this one is going totally good and this one is going totally good because what you're talking about is of interest to both of them, okay? And, uh, oh, and I didn't tell you, the name of the place is called The Villages in Florida. And, you know, you might want to look it up. And again, look at that article that I wrote because a lot of the data and stuff is there that you get a better feel for what I'm trying to get at. I, I think I, you know, had more care in writing it out and explaining it, you know, in the article for FYI Music than, uh, than probably this video. Make sure you subscribe. If you don't, I'm going to find you. So until the next lesson or another one of these um, random thoughts that I think you should know, see ya.